Good morning everyone. Myself Sandhya Chandran. I am going to teach you about cloud computing. Let's start with cloud enabling technologies. First, what is cloud computing? Cloud computing is the delivery of various computing services over the internet. It also includes storage, processing power, database, networking, software and analytics. We can say it as we can rent these services and use it them. Instead of owning and maintaining the physical data centers or servers, business and individual can access these resources from cloud service providers, paying only for what they use. This is the introduction of cloud computing. Let's make move to benefits of cloud computing. What are the benefits? On-demand self-service. Users can access the computing resources as needed without human interaction with the service providers. This makes it a characteristic. Next, broad network access. Services are available over the network and can be accessed through various devices like laptops, smartphones and tablets. Third, resource pooling. Cloud providers pool computing resources to serve multiple customers with resources dynamically assigned based on demand. Rapid elasticity. Resources can be scaled up or down as per our needs changes. Measured services. Resource usage is monitored, controlled and reported, providing the transparency for both the provider and the user. These five points makes cloud computing a better when compared to other services. Next, types of cloud computing. There are three types of cloud computing, public cloud, private cloud, and hybrid cloud. What is public cloud? Public cloud, that is, the services that are delivered over the public through internet and shared among multiple organizations. Its examples include Amazon Web Service, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud. And the second, private cloud, dedicated to a single organization providing more control and security. It can be hosted on-premise or by a third-party provider. Hybrid Cloud combines both the features of private and public clouds, allowing the data and applications to be shared between them for greater flexibility. Next, Cloud Computing Models. There are three models that are considered as the main. First, Infrastructure as a Service. It is also known as IAAS. Next, Platform as a Service, also known as PAAS. Third, software as a service, SAAS. First, infrastructure as a service. It provides infrastructures, provides virtualized computing resources like virtual machines, storage, and networks. Second, platform as a service, PaaS. It offers a platform for developers to build, test, and deploy their applications without worrying about the underlying infrastructure. Third, software as a service delivers the software applications over the internet on a subscription basis without needing to install and maintain the software on a local device. These are the cloud computing models which make them also an attractive. Next, benefits of cloud computing. First benefit, cost efficiency. It reduces the need for large capital investment in hardware and software. Second, scalability. Easily scales the resources to match the changing demands. Flexibility. Access to a wide range of services and resources as needed. Security. Provides offer advanced features to protect data through users must also manage their own security measures. These are the benefits of cloud computing. Next, let's move on to service-oriented architecture, also known as SOE. What is service-oriented architecture? It is a design approach where software components are organized as distinct services that can be reused and combined to create the application. Each service in SOA performs a specific business function and these things can communicate with each other which make these services an attractive one. The characteristic of SOA First, modularity. It is breaks down the application into smaller, self-contained services, each responsible for a specific business function. The second, interoperability. Services in SOE can interact with each other regardless of the platform or the technology they are built on, making it easier to integrate into different systems. The main aspect of characteristic of SOE is interactivity among themselves. Components of SOE. There are three main components, service provider, service consumer, service registry. 
service provider, the entity that creates and provides the service making it available to others. It is also known as provider. Consumer, the one who consumes the service. The entity that uses the service. It can be another service or an application. Service registry, a directory where the services are published and can be searched for and discovered by potential customers. What are the benefits of SOA? What can be used? Scalability, efficiency, flexibility, cost effectiveness. Scalability. The services can be added and integrated easily as the system grows. Next, efficiency. It reduces the duplication by reusing the existing service, makes it efficient. Flexibility. Supports integration with different systems and technologies. Cost effectiveness. Lower development and maintenance costs due to reuse and modularity. The examples of SOA. And consider a large retail company might use SOA to manage its operation. Separate service could handle inventory management, payment processing, customer relationship management. These services can interact with each other to process a customer's order from start to finish. But each service can also be updated replaced or scaled independently without affecting the others. Next, let's move on to REST. What is REST? REST stands for Representational State Transfer. It is an architectural style for what? Designing the network application. It is often used in web services. It relies on a stateless client-server communication model typically over HTTP to enable interaction between distributed systems. The principles of REST statelessness each request from a client to a server must contain all the information needed to understand and process the request. The server does not store any client contacts between the request. Second, client-server architecture. The client and the server are separate entities allowing them to evolve independently as long as the interface between them remains consistent. Uniform interface. RESTful services use standard methods like GET, POST, PUT, DELETE and standard formats like JSON, XML to ensure their consistency and interoperability. What are the characteristics of SOA? First, operational independence. The system within the SOS, they operate independently and each have its own life cycle. Manage real independence. The system is managed independently but collaborates with other systems to fulfill their shared goals as we said before. Distributed development and evolution. Systems are often developed by different teams, organizations or even across different time frames with different objectives and priorities. Emergent behavior. New behaviors emerge from the interaction of this independent system, which may not be predictable from the behavior of individual system. And the last, geographical distribution. Systems in an SOS are often distributed across different physical locations. Let's see an example of SOS. Consider a smart city as an SOS. It might include independent system like traffic management, energy grids, public transportation, emergency service and water supply system. Each system is managed independently, but they share their data and collaborate to enhance the efficiency of the operations, such as optimizing the traffic flow during an emergency. Let's see the connection between REST and SOS. A REST can be an enabling technology for SOS architecture. Since RESTful API provides standardized, stateless communication mechanisms, they can be used to integrate the independent system within an SOS. This allows the systems to interact seamlessly while maintaining their autonomy, supporting their emergent behavior, flexibility required in an SOS. Next, web service. What is a web service? It is a standardized way for applications or systems to communicate over the internet, enabling them to share their data and functionality regardless of their platforms or technologies they use. And how does a service work? It has three points, provider, requester, and registry. Service provider. The service provider is the one that creates a web service and makes it available to the other systems. That means they are the one who creates it and providing for others. The provider defines how other systems can interact with the service. Service requester or consumer. The consumer is the application or the system that requests the service. The consumer sends a request to the provider and receives a response. 
service registry. Some system use a service registry like UDDI, which means Universal Description, Discovery and Integration, where web servers are published and can be discovered by consumers. The characteristic of web service that makes it differ from others, interoperability. Web servers allow different applications to communicate with each other, even if they are built on different platforms, using different programming languages or on different operating systems. Next, standardized protocol. They use the standardized protocols like HTTP, XML, SOAP, Simple Object Access Protocol, Representational State Transfer REST to ensure their consistent communication. Third, loose coupling. Web servers are designed to be loosely coupled, meaning that changes in one service do not necessarily affect the others. This flexibility allows for easier integration and maintenance. The fourth, modularity. Web servers are modular, meaning that they perform specific tasks or provide specific functionalities. This modularity enables the reuse of service across different applications. Self-describing. Web servers often use standards like WSTL, Web Service Description Language, to describe the available operation, inputs, outputs, and how to interact with the service. These are the characteristics of web service. What are the types of web service? First, SOAP web service. SOAP means Simple Object Access Protocol. It is a protocol for what? Exchanging the structured information in a web service. It relies on the XML for its message format, usually operates over HTTP, but can also use other protocols like SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. So provides a high level of security and can be used in scenarios that require strict standards such as in banking or telecommunication. Let's see an example. First, media and content platform. In media, let's see about streaming services. When we hear the word streaming services, our mind will replace Netflix and Spotify, Disney Plus. In these, we use a subscribe model where users pay a recurring fee to access the library of content. It includes music, movie shows, news and magazine. Online news outlets and magazine often use a subscription model where they get access to a premium content. And second, software as a service. Platforms such as Microsoft 365, Adobe Creative Cloud or Salesforce operate on a subscription model where users need to pay for their access. Cloud computing service like Amazon Web Service, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, they offer subscription based services where the business pay for computing resources, storage and other services on a subscription basis, often with pay as the co-pricing. And last, even driven system. It also known as publish subscribe model. In software architecture, particularly in messaging, even driven system, the subscribe model is used where components registers to receive updates or data when specific events published by the publisher occurs. And the benefits of the subscribe model. Predictable revenue. For business, the subscription model provides a steady, predictable revenue system, which is often more stable than one-time sales. Customer loyalty. Subscription encourage long-term relationship with the customers, leading to higher customer retention and loyalty. Continuous improvement. Providers can continually improve their services or content, keeping their subscribers engaged, satisfying the recurring cost. And the last, scalability. This model allows business to scale easily by adding more subscribers without needing significant changes to their infrastructure. Last, virtualization. What is virtualization? It is a technology that allows the creation of multiple simulated environments or dedicated resources from a single physical hardware system. It abstracts the physical hardware and provides a virtual version of computing resources such as servers, storage device and networks. This technology is a fundamental building block for cloud computing and modern IT infrastructure. What are the benefits of virtualization? First, resource efficiency. It allows multiple virtual machines to share the same physical hardware, leading to better utilization of resources. The resource includes CPU, memory, and storage. Cost saving. By maximizing the use of physical hardware, organization can reduce the need for their physical service. Scalability and flexibility. Virtualization allows easy scaling of resources by adding or removing the virtual machines based on the demand. It provides flexibility to deploy new environments quickly. Isolation and security. Virtual machines are isolated from each other, so a problem in one machine does not affect the others. Disaster recovery. Virtualization simplifies the disaster recovery by allowing the machines to be easily backed, cloned and migrated to different physical servers. 
testing and development. Virtualization enables developers to create multiple testing environments without the need for additional physical hardware. Thank you. Devanaya Mall College for Women Autonomous Bilipuram Ungalitir Kalam Ungal Kail